Hello students, standard 8. We are nearly at the end of the chapter number 13. There is direct and inverse proportion. In exercise 13.2, we finish 1 to 6 question. Now, the 7th question. It says that a batch of bottles were packed in were packed in 25 boxes with 12 bottles in each case in each box if the same batch is packed using twenty bottles in each box, how many boxes would be filled? Select X boxes can be filled by using twenty bottles in each box. So here we can make a table for our convenience. Number of bottles in a box and number of boxes. So you are given that if 25 boxes are there when there are 12 bottles in each box. But now we have to pick 20 bottles. Then how many boxes are required? Now here you can see that if there are more bottles in a box, the number of boxes will be less. So it is the case of inverse proportion. So here is number of bottles in one box increases the number of boxes to fill will be less. So, it is a case of inverse proportion. So now you know that in inverse proportion we multiply them means 12 multiplied by 25 is equal to 20 multiplied by x. So 12 multiplied by 25 upon 20 equals x. 5 4 is a 5 5 is a 4 3 is a 5 3 is a 15. So x is equal to 15. So 15 boxes will be filled. So if you pack 20 box, bottles in a case, then the number of boxes required will be only the 15. Question number 8. A factory requires A factory requires 42 machines. to produce a given number of
given number of articles in 63 days articles in 63 days how many machines would be required to produce the same number same number of articles in 54 days so now let x machines would be required so now number of days and the number of machines If there are 42 machines, work can be done in 63 days. So now, X machines would be required if we complete in 54 days. So here, number of machines will more. if number of hours are reduced so it is a case of obviously the inverse proportion therefore 63 multiplied by 42 equals 54 multiplied by x so 63 multiplied by 42 upon 54 equals x 9 7 the 9 6 the 6 7 the so 49 so 49 machines would be So here, just we have to think that if one is increasing, then what happens to the other? If it is different, then it is case of inverse proportion. But both are increasing or both are decreasing, then it is the case of inverse proportion. Now the ninth question. A car takes... hours to reach a destination by traveling at the speed of 60 km per hour How long will it take if the car travels at the speed of 80 km per hour? So let car will take x 
सिक्स आवर्स एट द स्पीड ऑफ एटी किलोमीटर पर आवर टू रीच द डेस्टिनेशन सो नाउ स्पीड एंड टाइम स्पीड इन किलोमीटर पर आवर टाइम इन आवर so when speed is 60 km per hour then it takes 2 hours so now when the speed is 80 km so here when speed of car increases the time taken to reach destination will be less so it is the inverse proportion so 60 multiplied by 2 equals 80 multiplied by x so 60 multiplied by 2 divided by 80 2 fours are 3 twos are 2 twos are so x is equal to 3 by 2 that is 1 integer 1 by 2 hours so it will take 1 and 1/2 hours because speed is increasing so it will take less time to cover question 10 i am leaving for you for the homework so we will do the last question 11 a school has eight periods a day each of 45 minutes if the school has if the school has nine periods a day how long would be each period assuming that total number of school hours the number of school hours will be the same so let the let's each like a lecture is of x minutes so now number of lectures time of each lecture so there are eight lectures then 45 minutes then nine lectures hours here as number of lecture increase time of each lecture 
Bibi semuanya. So it is a case of inverse proportion. So eight multiplied by forty five is nine multiplied by x. So eight multiplied by forty five upon nine. Nine five is a forty five. So x is equal to. Eight five is a forty minutes. Therefore, each lecture will take forty minutes. So here, as we saw that in the whole chapter, the main two thing is important. First of all, we have to decide whether the relation between the two quantities will be the direct proportion or inverse proportion. And it is not so difficult if you think properly. Just think about the two quantities in which one of them will be depending on the other one. So now if one of them is increasing or decreasing same time the second quantity increasing or decreasing simultaneously then it is a direct proportion and if the one increasing same time the other is decreasing or vice versa then it is the case of inverse proportion in direct proportion what do you take the Ratio of them will be constant. Means x upon y is constant. So we take x one upon y one is equal to x two upon y. But in inverse proportion, their product is constant. Means x y is equal to constant. So we take x one y one is equal to x two y two, and so on to find out. So here we are going to finish the revision or uh, finish the chapter also, and today's session also. Will be followed by PDF with some more questions for your self practice. And any questions, write down in the comment section. Thank you very much.